The following is a presentation of the Eagles Sports Network. Mike Clowney, if you would open us up with a statement about a blackout home opener uh, and a second all-time meeting with the Virginia Lynchburg Dragons. It's fun. Um, it, it, we're, we're excited about getting into, you know, this first football game of the year. You know, these kids are prepared for this, you know, for months now. And to have a blackout theme, I think it's something that's fun, Just not just for a team, but for the entire campus. You know, guys get a second opportunity to put on the black uniforms. Um, you know, going into, you know, I guess a little bit about the team, you know, we've kind of been chasing each other around the field for, for several weeks now. And I think, you know, every football team in the country right now that hadn't played already is just looking forward to playing somebody in the opposite color jersey. And we're definitely no different. You know, our kids are looking forward to playing a football game on Thursday night. You know, I think Carson in football, obviously, homecoming means a lot. But almost two, A, behind that is the start of the season on a Thursday night under the lights. Uh, you're not competing with anybody else in the area. It's a chance to give the students a, ch a taste of what Carson Newman football about is about. How special are these, this specific type of home opener where you're opening under the lights, a color rush type game uh, as the only show in town? This, this is fun because, you know, it, give, it gives our students you know, outside of football, an opportunity to be a part of, you know, the football program. I think it starts to set the atmosphere, you know, for our entire campus for the entire year. You know, I think one thing that we try to do, you know, as a football program is go out and support our other sports. And sometimes on Saturday, you know, everybody kind of gets a little bit distracted. But Thursday night, we're all here. We've got class on Friday. So, you know, it's a great opportunity to get everyone out and be involved in something here on campus. Uh, Virginia Lynchburg is the opponent, a bit of a mystery wrapped in an enigma. Uh, there's no two deep. You've got a roster with no height, weight, year, uh, just name, number, position. What challenges are there in preparing for a team that uh, <coughs> really was on the cusp a few times last year, didn't win any games, but uh, put some pretty serious scares into some FCS opponents? You know, I talked to Coach Newman yesterday, and like, I've gotten to know him a good little bit over time. We recruited two of his sons, and, you know, it's the thing I told him, I mean, they do a great job, you know, for the situation being what it is, you know, not necessarily always knowing, you know, what his roster is going to look like. But when you watch him on film, they play hard, they're organized, you know, and they, they, they've got some really good players. And so that's where you kind of start seeing those games close on a couple of FCS schools last year. And so, I mean, they'll bring a good, talented football team in here. The big thing we've got to do is make sure that we're prepared to, to do what we do, you know, as good as we can do it. Uh, how much of it? unshakable play into uh, this situation. You know, it's, it's crazy because, like, you, you come up with a theme and what God will do is he'll give you an opportunity to test it out. And so we've had numerous of those. And so, like, this game, you know, really won't be any different from anything that we've experienced, like, throughout really this entire camp. You know, things have kind of transitioned and changed. And, you know, that theme went from Psalms 125. You know, the key to that is just trusting in the Lord. And so, like, that's your big thing for us. You know, trusting the Lord, trusting one another. And at the end of the day, that's what football turns into. You know, you got to believe in the guy beside you. You got to you got to count on him executing. You know, we'll surround ourselves with one another and trust one another. And then regardless of what they do, I think we'll be okay. Uh, you bring up the verse, uh, and it always makes me think of one of the all-time great camp traditions, and that's uh, the Creek baptisms. And uh, a few days removed from uh, from having several guys uh, make commitments uh, to Christ down on the banks of Mossy Creek, uh, just how gratifying is it to see uh, the Lord worked through your program uh, year in, year out. And it's just it's just awesome to see, you know, what the Lord does when we just kind of open the door and give him an opportunity. You know, our big thing, you know, in camp is like, you know, the big thing we want to do is plant the seeds. And so, and then that baptism is kind of evidence of the seeds being planted. You know, now the real work begins. You know, we've got to water it, we got to culture it, and, you know, we got to continue to help it grow into healthy fruit. Um, who surprised you through fall camp? Who's somebody internally that has made some massive strides? You know, one of the receivers, Newsom, a great kid. He's come in. He's worked. He's worked real diligently to be able to factor himself, you know, into the game plan. Just a guy coming in a little bit unknown, but just kind of day in and day out, you know, was able to come in and kind of stack good days, you know, and will have an opportunity to play. Um, Jet Jones is a guy that's continued to progress. 
you know, he's, this is his second year here. But just to watch him continue to progress, you know, throughout the season, Christian Hicks, that linebacker, um, been here two years and just not really a surprise, but you still kind of see that continued growth. Jameer Augustine's a linebacker that's kind of that same boat. He's a new guy, but um, he's been out a little bit this week, but just over camp, just kind of really consistent, you know. And then, um, you know, a couple of freshman offensive linemen, you know, Xavier McKinney. Um, it, it has done a good job for us, you know, throughout the summer. Uh, you bring up Jet Jones. Uh, I find it fascinating. He's the first player in the history of the football program to wear number zero. Uh, I don't know that I would have expected uh, him to, to take up that mantle. How did that process come about where numerically he, he gets that distinction? Um, it really, to be honest, it wasn't as requested as much as I thought it would have been. And so when Coach Jameson and those guys kind of go through and do the numbers, you know, you want to get those numbers on guys that starting and, you know, requested a number. Um, a lot of our other guys that are in those situations kind of got themselves established in numbers and I think want to kind of stick with those. But it'd be interesting to see you make sure Jet wears zero and don't play as a zero. That's my <laughs> biggest concern. Should make sure you play, put, 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 put 10 in front of it and give us 100 every week. <laughs> You'd accept a 33, too, I'd be willing to bet. That's a fair number. Yeah. <laughs> a couple consensus All-Americans have won that one. Uh, yourself and Andy Hibbett come to mind. Um, you, you look at uh, this offense, um, I don't want to call it brain spanking new because it's still the triple. You've got an offensive coordinator who has been here before, but obviously installing things probably later than you would have preferred, uh, how has that process gone leading up to kickoff? Yeah, it's been, you know, I sat and met with Kevin last night, and it's been, you know, I'd say, you know, you want to have high expectations, and I think they've either met or exceeded those with the short time frame that we've had to, to get things implemented and moving. And I think Kevin's done a good job of coming in and, you know, get, getting connecting with the coaches. Because when he got here, I think, one thing that we give our coaches a couple of weeks off in the summer. And so I didn't really want to, like, drag them back in during their off time. I don't think I'm going to get boss if I do that. Plus, the wives wouldn't, wouldn't appreciate it. And so, like, we, we honored that time um, for them to have off. And, but then when we got back in here, you know, I think coaches did a good job of, of, of jumping in and working to really, like, kind of mesh a bunch of different stuff together to make sure that we can get things to where we need to get it, to where we can, we can function. You know, and I, I applaud those guys for their willingness to come in and work to get that done. So our coaches have done a good job. Then the main part of that is the, 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 the players have to – they have to be willing to adapt and – you know, you saw a lot of hunger from those guys. Like, you know, they, they knew it was going to be a challenge. But the thing that they did was they kind of accepted that challenge. And it was it was good watching them respond to, hey, like, man, this is new. It, not necessarily new, but, like, learning new people is always hard um, because we all want to be comfortable. And, you know, the situation that's probably good for us in a lot of ways because we would have been kind of going into year three of doing the same thing. And so what it what it did was force all of us to get out of our comfort zone and, and go back and be able to put things together. But like I said, our kids, they, they took that challenge. And you can hear them talking about it. You can hear them communicating. You can see them engage and help one another as far as learning. You know, there's still kinks that we'll have to work out. And unfortunately, there's probably some of them that we won't know until we play Thursday. But, you know, I think as a program, we're all committed to, to making that work.